Hello again. So today I'm going to show you the upper class district of Rowan. Uh, this is my house. I actually built a new house that I liked it enough that I moved this to my home point in the game. So it used to be in the old town Fourth Wind, which you can probably look at if you go back a ways. But I like this one better. Uh, just it's pretty unique. I like I, I like how it's half on the hill, half not. And it's got this little, like, underground storage area down here. Uh, once I add two more uh, big houses in these areas here, they probably won't really see that stuff. But for now, I think it looks cool. Uh, so it's basically like a three-story house. It's got this tower in the back. I'm probably going to modify the internals of it just because... I, I, I think I'm going to change this tower to where it's like a uh, enchanting table in the, the top of the tower and then put like a bunch of bookshelves around it and stuff because right now the plan was inside this level right here since it's empty I was going to do it but it's so long and narrow that I don't think I can put bookcases in there along with it without just completely lining it around it you know and I think there's supposed to be like a one block gap but Anyway, so this is the first house. We'll go inside and I'll kind of show you around. And it's a fairly spacious house. It's got like a little side table over there. I built this like kind of little library thing around there. Those little pop outs that you saw, um, this is kind of more of an architectural feature just to give it some character. Got a big fireplace. Uh, back through here is the dining room, which is pretty big. And then I've got like the little kitchen prep area. And this just goes outside to, there's like a little kind of narrow alleyway for the housing district. And then we go up through the tower portion of it in the back corner there that you saw. And we've got kind of a little sitting room slash library. And then through here is like a kid's room, I guess, where there's two beds or you know, if you just want to have a lot of people living in this house. And then this room is like the master bedroom, I guess. It's got the double bed. It's got its own fireplace, which is directly above the other fireplace. Now, um, the only difference in this house, uh, I've got fire spread turned off in this town. So, I think you would probably be safe setting it up like this. These might be a little too close if you're going to build this for real without turning off fire spread. You might have some issues there with burning. But, uh, maybe not, I don't know. Then we go up to the next floor, which you saw this from outside. And then this is sort of like the little washroom. And then like another small little bedroom, which if, you know, this is like a rich house, this would probably be like the servants' quarters right here. And then we can keep going up to the top of the tower. Now these staircases I'd probably rip out and make just like a little ladder in the corner because it's tedious and also as you notice it kills all that space on this top area right here. But this is just basically like a little lookout tower so you can kind of move to the center of this right here and then you can see out all four sides and it's kind of a limited view because you're so high up and the windows you know realistically should be down at that level so you can see what's on the ground but I think I'll probably build like a pop these all out just a little bit wider so it's it's like a 5x5 five five instead of a 3x3 three three, and then put a ladder coming up in one corner and then just dress the walls with uh, bookcases and make that the enchanting room but I haven't fully decided yet I may just do it in that long all there and then add some other things too but it takes a while to get up and down in this house 
So now I'm gonna take you to this house back here. And this one I, I, I recorded myself building the entire thing. It's about an hour and a half of building time. So I'm probably gonna show you the key parts where I talk about certain things, why I did certain things, and then speed up the whole thing after that. So wherever it's uh, kind of boring, I'll just speed up the build, get rid of the tedious stuff, but it's got, uh, I'll put like a little path around it. It's not, i fly up here a little bit so you can see, but really if you were to switch the texture pack back to like the standard one, it would be a really boring house because it's just kind of a box with these two little bump outs. And it's got this utter, utterly worthless little balcony area right there. You can't really see out because, I mean, they don't really your only view is the roof of this house. So I may just get rid of that little bump out and just turn that into another room or reconfigure the whole upstairs floor. But then as you can see here, it's for sale. So in this town of Rowan, I've got three houses so far for sale. When you buy it, you get the whole house and the uh, chunk that it, it, it's on. So, if somebody comes in and wants to build, or wants to buy a house, they can just walk in here, and I think it says, like, oh, it's broken. Well, these were uh, pistons that were extended. I think, I think when I move, I move this house over one block just to make a little more room for the house next to it, and I think that's probably why those two are retracted instead of up, but you've seen them before, just the little piston tables, and then... This I got from a guy who, um, he showed me the Carson Mansion that I built a tutorial for. He built this, and then he used the watermelons as like a carpet. And I thought, oh, that's kind of a neat, because it gives you like a little floral texture or something. And So I thought I'd give it a try in this house, and it's all right. I mean, you can like right-click on them and harvest them or whatever. But since this uh, area is protected... Yeah, definitely when I moved it over, the furnace is flipped around. So I'll, that's something I'm going to have to come back in and fix just so everything looks good again. And then it's got a little staircase over here that takes you up to like the main living area where they just would hang out, I guess. And It's got the, the balcony. Like I said, you can come out here and look at the roof of my house. So it's kind of boring. But I don't know what else to do in there. I mean, I can make like a tiny little bedroom out of it, I guess. And then there were two beds here. Of course, when it got moved, they popped off. And this is like a, a closet. And there were some paintings on the wall on the other side. So when you open the closet, the back wall, where they, you can see through right there. And right there, those were paintings. I don't know why when you use world edit to move things it gets rid of paintings sometimes it even breaks signs and beds it's like beds and paintings just can't handle it yeah because there's signs on the ends of the arms there and they they stayed and then this up here again I was thinking whoever has this house could turn this into like their library or enchanting room or whatever Oh, excuse me. So, yep, yeah, that's this house. It's it, it's kind of it's pretty spacious. It's a pretty big house. It's just I just wasn't really happy with it, so I just threw it. And, it, and it's kind of hidden by the other houses, so you know it's it's the cheapest of the three that are for sale right now on the server, so. You know, if you want to buy a house in town, and I have it, I, well, I haven't used Townie to this capacity before, so I don't know if someone buys this house if they can like completely rebuild their house, you know. And I'm okay with that. You can, you know, make additions or whatever. It's just the only thing I'd ask that if you own the house is that you keep it medieval, you keep it looking good, and you don't like copy the house that's right next to you or something, you know, kind of make it look unique. And, uh, so this is the next one that I built. I love the way this one turned out, too. It's It's got a lot of character. 
Um, where I get my ideas for these, uh, with the exception of that one in the back, uh, that one I just decided I was just going to start building and see what I came up with. And I, I see some things that I would have definitely changed, but like this one here, I googled uh, medieval Tudor houses, and I found uh, like a little model for I guess like role-playing game characters or something that. It even it had this like raised area. It was completely solid on the bottom. It didn't have the arch hollowed out area, and then it had these little um, bump outs on either side. Uh, this second set of stairs here wasn't there. It just turned and went up into the house. And uh, you don't know what the interior looks like, but it had a really steep roof, and then it had uh, the same sloped roof up top. And it was a little different as far as like how the windows were on the top of the tower but I thought well that's cool and so then on this one there was a like a round tower right here in the center of the where the two roof, roofs met there's this little round tower right here and so I kind of copied that as best I could Turned out okay. I mean, with Minecraft, it's always blocky. And then uh, it had like a little garden area with like a gazebo. I think it was for a video game. It was just a square little patch of land with this house on it. So I was like, well, wow, that's just perfect for towny Minecraft thing because it's a square and and it's got like little gardens and stuff. So this one has you know some landscaping. And it's got a little deck right there. And then over here, it's got another little deck coming out of the side. And then the the roof is interesting because usually you have like a gable roof where the ends are flat like this. And then you have a hip roof where um, all four sides of the roof are sloped. So there's no, you can't see the ends. Well, this one's kind of a partial one. It's just a top three blocks are sloped and it does that on all the sides but uh, yeah so it it's kind of an interesting roof like I said and then it's got two fireplaces it's kind of hugged up against the wall right here so it's a little tight but um, let's just go inside and I'll show you around this one and this one is also like I said for sale it's the most expensive one just because of all the character and uniqueness to it but it's got this tiny little fountain over here this was like a gazebo thing so I just did my best that's just uh, a bunch of half step blocks and in order to get them to come out right it's it's kind of interesting because you have to basically build a flat roof and then um, wait, build a flat roof that's one level above this roof and then you just kind of come in and plunk down these middle ones so they're upside down and then uh, break away all the top stuff and then you put four on the the normal level basically on tops of the two high fence posts and then this one here is on the uh, basically one block above these lower ones so you don't need to have anything above it to make it attach and then this has like fence along here to support the extensions and this one's got like double because that sticks out so far for that deck and then the one on the other end is kind of the same way and this one I, I used the the birch wood for the floor it's got kind of like a little kitchen area there it's got a little dining room table and like the little living room type area and like middle e medieval houses they didn't have rooms like we have you know they would just probably be like one big common area so it's kind of similar but Basically, it'd just be like a table, some chairs, and then like the cooking area, and that would be that whole floor probably. And then you'd have maybe another room with like a bed or just like a loft that's above it. You'll you'll kind of see that style of house when I get to the poor district and some a lot of the farmhouses and stuff that'll be around the city. Uh, but for now, I figured these guys are rich; they can have lots of individual spaces and just things that normally wouldn't be in a house like you know just a room designed just for sitting around a fire you know it's like you have the space why not you know and there's like a desk here and then back through here is like a big bedroom and uh, out here
here is the little deck which gives you a good view of the church and the keep as well as your gazebo out there so you can see if somebody's hanging out in it say so, hey you kids get off my lawn and there's a little wardrobe right there and then we can go up the stairs more. Now this one's interesting because you kind of curve to the right to get up to the first floor and then it does it switch back to the left so just out of habit I always tend to turn when I get to the top of the stair that way instead of this way and I don't know it just takes some getting used to I guess but and then again another like fireplace with a chair in front of it and then we've got another bedroom it's kind of a little desk area I built there I don't know if I really like that but I figure you know if somebody wants to redesign the house when they buy it they can they can change the furniture because I'll probably turn some of these rooms into like massive furnaces and chests and stuff like that so they can just build their junk or do a uh, enchanting room or something like that or potion table whatever but this one, you know, a little tower is where the staircase lives, so it kind of has a purpose, you know, serves a, a purpose. Uh, and the next house I'm going to show you, it has a little tower as well that I like how it turned out. Now this one, I found a picture online, I think it was like a computer generated image. It was really tall, it had what looked to be two houses that were stuck together and uh, so like this left side was sort of like a sandstone texture and then the right side was um, brick and cobble and this like wattle and daub type stuff that we use for the tops here and it was really kind of plain and then it had this big tower in the center and I think the tower had like a conical top roof on it if I remember right and then it had two like little deck things and so I built that house almost as close as I could get it to an exact copy and it just looked terrible in Minecraft it was too tall it was too skinny and there's no pictures of the back so I didn't really know how the back was gonna look but it, I had my own version of how I wanted to do it but I just didn't like how tall and kind of stupid it looked and so I changed this sandstone back to the same texture so it just looked like one house instead of I think it was meant to be like if you were to have a whole bunch of houses that are just hugged right up tight you know like some of the uh, medieval England you know bigger cities they just had house on house on house on house just all butted right up against each other and they would almost kind of like condos where they would share one common roof or something that just continues in Sometimes you'd have like an alley between them because the floor above would extend beyond and touch the floor above of the other house. But then you'd have the how the um, the lower floor is recessed like this, how this has some overhang to it. If you have this same house back to back, you'd have this nice little alleyway in between them. And I, I was kind of thinking that's how this would turn out, but I think I may do that in some other areas of the the town. Have houses that are that close together but since this is the rich district I wanted them to be um, you know kind of have like some yard space now they don't really have much yard in this house but I thought it would be cool so let's go inside if you hear some clicking this is my dog walking around on the floors so in here you've got the kitchen and like dining room area and then there's a staircase that's going up and this kind of like the little living room area and it's got access to the deck which gives you a view of the gate and the deck wraps around the entire house and you've got kind of this like Back. I am locked up. Oh, there we go. Okay. So you've got this sort of like little backyard, courtyard area. Um, this could be grass just as easily as cobble, but I wasn't really sure what to put back here. Originally I had like a fountain off that wall, and this was actually up at that level, so your neighbor's 
uh, house was like right up, you know, even with this right here. So that wall right there actually would have just been the neighbor's house. But I lowered everything down just so it looked better. I like it better that way. And so it, uh, you know, you kind of, it's a little more private as far as, you know, this wall not being your neighbor's house, although your neighbor's house is right there. So it's not really that much more private or anything, but. So let's go over here. And so this is kind of neat because the tower is the staircase. And so the house is kind of divided in half still. So like this side's like a big bedroom. And this one I had the same issue. I moved the top half of the house down to get rid of the a middle layer. That that room in there was basically just a big empty floor. And I had no idea what to put in it. And then this was like another bedroom. So I had like three or four bedrooms. And so when I lowered it down, I lost a bedroom and I lost an empty room. And the chests rotated. I don't know why they felt the need to rotate, but they did. So I think it's just another glitch of world edit. But anywho, so we'll go up the stairs here. You've got like another fireplace room. And then there's another bedroom. This one, the chests are okay, so go figure. And this one has its own little deck out the front here that lets you see quite a bit. Now there's going to be... No, I think there might be something in this green grass area right down here, but I kept that pond there because I liked it, and I added some reeds and some lily pads and things and kind of just cleaned it up a little bit. I'm going to leave that there just because I like the look of it. So there will probably be some trees and maybe like a big gazebo right in the center of that and just kind of make that like a little park area just because I kind of like how those and then this has like this little loft area up in here you could probably hide some chests up there or something if you own this house uh, this is kind of the house is in between the price of the first one and the second one they're all around 4,000 to 4,500 and you can get that kind of money pretty quick just selling um, all the stuff you mine or if you find some diamonds I, I, I want to say that diamonds are worth like a thousand or something but I don't remember for sure off the top of my head. But then, so you got this little tower. These uh, cranials, I believe they're called, on a castle. They could probably be knocked down to half blocks and then give you a little better visibility. Uh, or you could just, you know, step up into this half block one there and take a look around. But it's got a pretty good tower and, the, and originally this tower was just ridiculous it was like way up here it was like the tallest house in the you know taller than the church everything was just tall and and my house should be the tallest <laughs> but i may do the same thing on mine i may knock down that roof because i think it especially from this angle with as steep as the roof is and how big that thing is it just kind of looks goofy i think i almost want like the castle style like this one's got for the top but i don't want the houses, I mean, they might start looking a little too similar, so I don't know. I may try it, and if I don't like it, I'll fix it back or something. But I think if I put the enchanting table up there and make that bigger, it's just going to look really dumb because it'll be like this, you know, giant soccer ball looking thing on top of it. I don't know. I, I, I think that the, these, all these houses turned out pretty good. And, I don't want to put another one here just because I don't want to crowd it so much. So that's why I was thinking I might just make this a park. And you know, these are the this is the rich, the upper class area. So they they get the big houses and the the lush gardens outside to make everything look nice, you know. And then uh, right here will probably be one more house, like I said. And then this one will be where it's starting to transition out of the upper class stuff. So this will be. When you buy this lot, you'll actually get this walkway as well. But I don't want, I mean, I don't want anyone touching the walkway. So if somebody buys this house, and it may end up just being a market, so there's not an issue. But if, if I do put a house here and somebody buys the house and they start messing with this, you know, I'll be like, hey, put that back. And uh, I reserve the right to go in and fix stuff if somebody changes things. That I'll let you know, you know, like, hey, don't do that. Don't change that. But, uh yeah, so like I said, I'm going to attempt to show a tutorial of this house being built. And then I may come back through and do tutorials of that house 
and that house, and this house, and I'll, they may they may end up being more just like speed builds. But I always hate going back and rebuilding a house that I've already built. But I also don't like showing the build process um, necessarily because, especially with this house, I mean, because they can take like four to six hours to build one house just with all the changes. And I mean, you watch somebody like Jamesy Boy Minecraft, and you'll see him just. He's really fast. I mean, he's, he's a young guy. He's got that good hand-eye coordination. He just click, 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 you know, just nails these things out, like, super fast. And it, it takes me a little bit longer. Um, and, you know, I'll build the house, and then I'll look at it, and I'm just like, oh, that just doesn't look right. So then I'll go back through, and I'll swap out the, the texture with something else. You know, and, and then I'll say, oh, yeah, okay, I like that, but I want the room to be a little wider, so I'll add another row, you know, bump out the wall or whatever. And you just keep changing it and tweaking it until you get something that, that looks good. I mean, like this house probably took the same amount of time just because, you know, I want to make it look nice. And then, you know, you go in, you do the interiors, and then you find out that one of the rooms is just a little too tight, and you're like, well, if I bumped out the wall... You know, it's kind of how this back little bump out came to be. It was just that I wanted a little bit bigger room, and I thought, well, you know, because cause this deck takes up a lot of space, so this room would have been really small. It would only be like three by four, I think, inside. And so I just said, well, I can bump it out the back. That's pretty common style is to have the upstairs a little bit larger than the downstairs as far as real estate, you know. And so, yeah, he just... It's just kind of continually evolving. So a lot of people like James of Minecraft or the Carbrons, which you've heard me talk about in my earlier episodes. They will build a house, and then they'll go back once they got all the you know, nitpicky stuff out of the way and changing it and all that kind of stuff. They'll go back and then make a tutorial. And sometimes you'll notice, like in the distance, he'll have like three or four of the same house. And I'm like, how many tutorials did you make before that was perfect? You know, and so it's just I, I don't have the time for that. And so um, I, I apologize for not showing the builds of all these houses. And like I said, I'll probably show one or two of them. But I think for the most part, just, you know, if you slow down my video, pause it here and there. And, you know, while I'm talking, I'll kind of just do that. I'll go I'll go slow and just kind of pause on some sections. But you can just see how it's built and then recreate it. I mean, like, the roof is is rather involved on this one, but all it is is just two solid blocks stacked up with, with stairs on top. And you just keep repeating that all the way to the top, and then the only part that's not is on the outside. I put upside down stairs just to give it that full thickness, and it just really makes it look nice. Inside the house, it doesn't have that. And that's just so you get more room in the house. And so you can kind of see... And, you know, I've heard people say, hey, can you make your, your town to where it looks good on default texture? Well, I can tell you right now, I don't think that's ever going to happen. But what I plan on doing is I'm going to make this fridefx.zip texture pack. Right now it's a 64-bit one. I'm going to make a 16-bit one. I'm going to make a 32-bit one. And I'll probably, like, make the 16-bit one using everything vanilla minecraft except for the textures and this is why um, I don't want to use the vanilla because if you look at it's like rainbow bright lives here you know and just went crazy building these nutty houses and some of it you know like like this house over here when I built it originally I'm like I'm gonna make this one with normal colors so I put logs in the corners I put sandstone here and I just put white wool or light gray wool here and the brick and the cobble and I'm like it'll look great you know it'll look great and it just looked terrible it just looked terrible and you know like over here like the church is okay it's you know cuz like the nether brick it kinda has a reddish texture to it in this one and this area looks okay I mean there's some areas but like the inn and I'm kind of rambling, so I, I probably shouldn't go too far. But, 
but you know it's just different colors of wool and it's like who who really needs that you know it's like there's the main ones like you come over here to the the town square and you can see i used yellow blue white red and uh, i'm not using it but there's a green uh, green and a brown that are still available so you have like the primary basic colors you know it's just weird things like orange and purple and cyan and lime wool you know those kinds of colors pink whatever you know they're the ones that uh, ovo or, or uh, what's the other guy um, let's go in here I can show you so Ovo's rustic, and then there was oh man, why is that escaping me? This is James E. Boy Minecraft's edit of John Smith. That's what it was. So that's the other thing in here. You can use Ovo's rustic pack. You can use John Smith's texture pack. You can use uh, this one. His is a 32-bit. So you'll see that uh, when I go back things may be a little smoother, a little faster. And his has that same cross texture. I am going to keep that the same. I thought about, you know, using a, a certain number, but you can see it looks a little bit different, like the, the cobblestone and the stone bricks look a little more grungy. Uh, and in some ways, I like it better. Uh, nether brick is uh, wood. And it's kind of nice because your stair steps, you can get one of these. Jamesy Boy loves to use these upside down on the bottom of like the logs on the walls. And then one, uh, this is the same thing with Ovo. One of the the walls they turn into wood. So you can have logs that are on their sides, like if you use them for, for beams. And I just, I didn't like that. I changed it back to... The regular texture just because I, I thought he was eating up too many colors I think that's yellow and it's like I like yellow I want to use yellow on canopies and things like that so I switched it back uh, and then the nether brick he turned into this because that way it gives you like a bark um, block a bark step and a bark uh, fence and this is where I think it's kind of stupid I'm like you have a nether brick block that has the wood texture on the top, the bottom, the sides. Why did you change your yellow wool to the same texture? It's like change that back to yellow wool, or at least do something else that's different, you know, that's unique. And then the straight stone, they made it look a little more like rubble. Uh, I'm not a huge fan of that because the the straight stone was supposed to represent solid rock. This doesn't look solid. This just looks like another form of cobblestone. But that's his version of it. But uh, anyway, I'm just going to kind of show you some more of these. And this video is getting pretty long probably, so I'll po I apologize for that. But uh, I just want to make sure you get to see kind of how a lot of this was built. And like I said, when I'm showing you the interior of the house, just pause it here and there, look at it. You can see how they're built. And if there's one that's just like, oh my god, that's way too complicated. I just can't tell how you built it then I can either do a, a tutorial like I did on uh, Carson Mansion one where I just kind of like chop off the roof and record a little bit and then chop off that level and record a little bit and then go down to the ground and show you the basically frame of it. And then I just take all those videos and then reverse the order and kind of show you a build from the ground up. But that's, that's one way to do it and it's fast and you can just kind of count the blocks and put them down but really it's like I, I, I in the in my first town of fourth wind I copied a lot of other people's houses and did tutorials and it kind of helped me see how they built things which helped me become a better builder so I can definitely see the reasoning behind it where people you know can benefit from uh from tutorials and things like that but at the same time it's like you're you're gonna start making carbon copies of other people's stuff all the time like fourth wind I don't even like it anymore because I mean it's still a cool little town don't get me wrong but um, I just don't like it anymore because it uh, there's so many 
things in there that are copied. It's like, oh, I've seen that before. You know, it's just not original. So in this area, I decided I was going to build everything from scratch. You know, it's like I used references that I Googled, but nothing in here is, you know, a copy of somebody else's thing. But anyway, so this is all I was going to show you for now. Um, thanks for watching. And... Hopefully you guys are enjoying the videos. Uh, as always, comment so I can tell what you guys like or what you don't like. And uh, I'll try to make things fit a little better to everybody's comments. And thanks for watching. Bye.